Design of Reinforced Concrete by Jack C. McCormick Chapter 1 Introduction 1.1 Concrete and Reinforced Concrete Concrete is a mixture of sand, gravel, crushed rock, or other aggregates held together in a rock-like mass with a paste of cement and water. Sometimes one or more admixtures are added to change certain characteristics of the concrete such as its workability, durability, and time of hardening. As with most rock-like substances, concrete has a high compressive strength and a very low tensile strength. Reinforced concrete is a combination of concrete and steel wherein the steel reinforcement provides the tensile strength lacking in the concrete. Steel reinforcing is also capable of resisting compression forces and is used in columns as well as in other situations, which are described later. 1.2 Advantages of Reinforced Concrete as a Structural Material Reinforced concrete may be the most important material available for construction. It is used in one form or another for almost all structures, great or small buildings, bridges, pavements, dams, retaining walls, tunnels, drainage and irrigation facilities, tanks, and so on. The tremendous success of this universal construction material can be understood quite easily if its numerous advantages are considered. These include the following. 1. It has considerable compressive strength per unit cost compared with most other materials. 2. Reinforced concrete has great resistance to the actions of fire and water and in fact, is the best structural material available for situations where water is present. During fires of average intensity, members with a satisfactory cover of concrete over the reinforcing bars suffer only surface damage without failure. 3. Reinforced concrete structures are very rigid. 4. It is a low maintenance material. 5. As compared with other materials, it has a very long service life. Under proper conditions, reinforced concrete structures can be used indefinitely without reduction of their load-carrying abilities. This can be explained by the fact that the strength of concrete does not decrease with time but actually increases over a very long period, measured in years, because of the lengthy process of the solidification of the cement paste. 6. It is usually the only economical material available for footings, or slabs, basement walls, piers, and similar applications. 7. A special feature of concrete is its ability to be cast into an extraordinary variety of shapes from simple slabs, beams, and columns to great arches and shells. 8. In most areas, concrete takes advantage of inexpensive local materials, sand, gravel, and water, and requires relatively small amounts of cement and reinforcing steel, which may have to be shipped from other parts of the country. 9. A lower grade of skilled labor is required for erection as compared with other materials such as structural steel. 1.3 Disadvantages of reinforced concrete as a structural material. To use concrete successfully, the designer must be completely familiar with its weak points as well as its strong ones. Among its disadvantages are the following. 1. Concrete has a very low tensile strength, requiring the use of tensile reinforcing. Two forms are required to hold the concrete in place until it hardens sufficiently. In addition, false work or shoring may be necessary to keep the forms in place for roofs, walls, oars, and similar structures until the concrete members gain sufficient strength to support themselves. Form work is very expensive. In the United States, its costs run from one third to two thirds of the total cost of a reinforced concrete structure, with average values of about 50%. It should be obvious that when efforts are made to improve the economy of reinforced concrete structures, the major emphasis is on reducing formwork costs. 3. The low strength per unit of weight of concrete leads to heavy members. This becomes an increasingly important matter for long span structures, where concrete's large dead weight has a great effect on bending moments. Lightweight aggregates can be used to reduce concrete weight, but the cost of the concrete is increased. 4. Similarly, the low strength per unit of volume of concrete means members will be relatively large, an important consideration for tall buildings and long span structures. 5. The properties of concrete vary widely because of variations in its proportioning and mixing. Furthermore, the placing and curing of concrete is not as carefully controlled as is the production of other materials, such as structural steel and laminated wood. Two other characteristics that can cause problems are concrete's shrinkage and creep. These characteristics are discussed in section 1.11 of this chapter. 1.4 Historical Background Most people believe that concrete has been in common use for many centuries, but this is not the case. The Romans did make use of a cement called Pozzolana before the birth of Christ. They found large deposits of a sandy volcanic ash near M.T. Vesuvius and in other places in Italy. When they mixed this material with quicklime and water as well as sand and gravel, 
it hardened into a rock-like substance and was used as a building material. 1. Might expect that a relatively poor grade of concrete would result, as compared with today's standards, but some Roman concrete structures are still in existence today. One example is the Pantheon, a building dedicated to all gods, which is located in Rome and was completed in AD 126. The art of making Pozzolanic concrete was lost during the Dark Ages and was not revived until the 18th and 19th centuries. A deposit of natural cement rock was discovered in England in 1796 and was sold as Roman cement. Various other deposits of natural cement were discovered in both Europe and America and were used for several decades. The real breakthrough for concrete occurred in 1824, when an English bricklayer named Joseph Aspton, after long and laborious experiments, obtained a patent for a cement that he called Portland cement because its color was quite similar to that of the stone quarried on the Isle of Portland off the English coast. He made his cement by taking certain quantities of clay and limestone, pulverizing them, burning them in his kitchen stove, and grinding the resulting clinker into a N.E. powder. During the early years after its development, his cement was used primarily in stuccos. This wonderful product was adopted very slowly by the building industry and was not even introduced in the United States until 1868, the first Portland cement was not manufactured in the United States until the 1870s. The first uses of concrete are not very well known. Much of the early work was done by the Frenchmen François L. E. Brun, Joseph Lambert, and Joseph Munier. In 1832, L. E. Brun built a concrete house and followed it with the construction of a school and a church with the same material. In about 1850, Lambert built a concrete boat reinforced with a network of parallel wires or bars. Credit is usually given to Munier, however, for the invention of reinforced concrete. In 1867, he received a patent for the construction of concrete basins or tubs and reservoirs reinforced with a mesh of iron wire. His stated goal in working with this material was to obtain lightness without sacrificing strength. From 1867 to 1881, Munier received patents for reinforced concrete railroad ties, or slabs, arches, footbridges, buildings, and other items in both France and Germany. Another Frenchman, François Coignet, built simple reinforced concrete structures and developed basic methods of design. In 1861, he published a book in which he presented quite a few applications. He was the RST person to realize that the addition of too much water to the mix greatly reduced concrete strength. Other Europeans who were early experimenters with reinforced concrete included the Englishman William Fairbairn and William B. Wilkinson, the German G. A. Weiss, and another Frenchman, François Hennebique. 3,4 William E. Ward built the RST reinforced concrete building in the United States in Port Chester, New York, in 1875. In 1883, he presented a paper before the American Society of Mechanical Engineers in which he claimed that he got the idea of reinforced concrete by watching English laborers in 1867 trying to remove hardened cement from their iron tools. Thaddeus Hyatt, an American, was probably the RST person to correctly analyze the stresses in a reinforced concrete beam, and in 1877, he published a 28-page book on the subject, entitled An Account of Some Experiments with Portland Cement Concrete, Combined with Iron as a Building Material. In this book he praised the use of reinforced concrete and said that rolled beams, steel, have to be taken largely on faith. Hyatt put a great deal of emphasis on the high re-resistance of concrete. E. L. Ransom of San Francisco reportedly used reinforced concrete in the early 1870s and was the originator of deformed, or twisted, bars, for which he received a patent in 1884. These bars, which were square in cross-section, were cold twisted with one complete turn in a length of not more than 12 times the bar diameter. 7. The purpose of the twisting was to provide better bonding or adhesion of the concrete and the steel. In 1890 in San Francisco, Ransom built the Leland Stanford Jr. Museum. It is a reinforced concrete building 3 12 feet long and 2 stories high in which discarded wire rope from a cable car system was used as tensile reinforcing. This building experienced little damage in the 1906 earthquake and the re. 1.5 Comparison of Reinforced Concrete and Structural Steel for Buildings and Bridges Installation of the Concrete Gravity Base Substructure, CGBS, for the Luna Oil and Gas Platform in the Sea of Okhotsk, Sakhalin Region, Russia. That ensued. The limited damage to this building and other concrete structures that withstood the Great 1906 re-led to the widespread acceptance of this form of construction on the West Coast. Since the early 1900s, the development and use of reinforced concrete in the United States has been very rapid. 8,9 
1.6 Comparison of reinforced concrete and structural steel for buildings and bridges. When a particular type of structure is being considered, the student may be puzzled by the question, should reinforced concrete or structural steel be used? There is much joking on this point, with the proponents of reinforced concrete referring to steel as that material that rusts and those favoring structural steel referring to concrete as the material that, when overstressed, tends to return to its natural state that is, sand and gravel. There is no simple answer to this question, inasmuch as both of these materials have many excellent characteristics that can be utilized successfully for so many types of structures. In fact, they are often used together in the same structures with wonderful results. The selection of the structural material to be used for a particular building depends on the height and span of the structure, the material market, foundation conditions, local building codes, and architectural considerations. For buildings of less than four stories, reinforced concrete, structural steel, and wall-bearing construction are competitive. From four to about 20 stories, reinforced concrete and structural steel are economically competitive, with steel having been used in most of the jobs above 20 stories in the past. Today, however, reinforced concrete is becoming increasingly competitive above 20 stories, and there are a number of reinforced concrete buildings of greater height around the world. The 74-story, 859-foot high water tower place in Chicago is the tallest reinforced concrete building in the world. The 1,465 feet CN Tower, not a building, in Toronto, Canada, is the tallest reinforced concrete structure in the world. Although we would all like to be involved in the design of tall, prestigious reinforced concrete buildings, there are just not enough of them to go around. As a result, nearly all of our work involves much smaller structures. Perhaps 9 out of 10 buildings in the United States are 3 stories or fewer in height, and more than two-thirds of them contain 15,000 square feet or less of our space. Foundation conditions can often affect the selection of the material to be used for the structural frame. If foundation conditions are poor, using a lighter structural steel frame may be desirable. The building code in a particular city may favor one material over the other. For instance, Many cities have rezones in which only reproof structures can be erected a very favorable situation for reinforced concrete. Finally, the time element favors structural steel frames, as they can be erected more quickly than reinforced concrete ones. The time advantage, however, is not as great as it might seem at RST because, if the structure is to have any type of re-rating, the builder will have to cover the steel with some kind of repro material after it is erected. Making decisions about using concrete or steel for a bridge involves several factors, such as span, foundation conditions, loads, architectural considerations, and others. In general, concrete is an excellent compression material and normally will be favored for short span bridges and for cases where rigidity is required, as, perhaps, for railway bridges. 1.7 Compatibility of Concrete and Steel Concrete and steel reinforcing work together beautifully in reinforced concrete structures. The advantages of each material seem to compensate for the disadvantages of the other. For instance, the great shortcoming of concrete is its lack of tensile strength, but tensile strength is one of the great advantages of steel. Reinforcing bars have tensile strengths equal to approximately 100 times that of the usual concretes used. The two materials bond together very well so there is little chance of slippage between the two, thus, they will act together as a unit in resisting forces. The excellent bond obtained is the result of the chemical adhesion between the two materials, the natural roughness of the bars, and the closely spaced rib-shaped deformations rolled onto the bar's surfaces. Reinforcing bars are subject to corrosion, but the concrete surrounding them provides them with excellent protection. The strength of exposed steel subjected to the temperatures reached in rest of ordinary intensity is nil, but enclosing the reinforcing steel in concrete produces very satisfactory re-ratings. Finally, Concrete and steel work well together in relation to temperature changes because their coefficients of thermal expansion are quite close. For steel, the coefficient is 0.0000065 per unit length per degree Fahrenheit, while it varies for concrete from about 0.0000004 to 0.0000007, average value, 0.0000055. 1.8 Design Codes the most important code in the United States for reinforced concrete design is the American Concrete Institute's Building Code Requirements for Structural Concrete, ACI 318-11. 10. This code, which is used primarily for the design of buildings, is followed for the majority of the numerical examples given in this text. Frequent references are made to this document, 
and section numbers are provided. Design requirements for various types of reinforced concrete members are presented in the code along with a commentary on those requirements. The commentary provides explanations, suggestions, and additional information concerning the design requirements. As a result, users will obtain a better background and understanding of the code. 1.9 Types of Portland Cement The ACI code is not in itself a legally enforceable document. It is merely a statement of current good practice in reinforced concrete design. It is, however, written in the form of a code or law so that various public bodies, such as city councils, can easily vote it into their local building codes, and then it becomes legally enforceable in that area. In this manner, the ACI code has been incorporated into law by countless government organizations throughout the United States. The International Building Code, IBC, which was RST published in 2000 by the International Code Council, has consolidated the three regional building codes, Building Officials and Code Administrators, International Conference of Building Officials, and Southern Building Code Congress International, into one national document. The IBC code is updated every three years and refers to the most recent edition of ACI 318 for most of its provisions related to reinforced concrete design, with only a few modifications. It is expected that IBC 2012 will refer to ACI 318 to 11 for most of its reinforced concrete provisions. The ACI 318 code is also widely accepted in Canada and Mexico and has had tremendous inions on the concrete codes of all countries throughout the world. As more knowledge is obtained pertaining to the behavior of reinforced concrete, the ACI revises its code. The present objective is to make yearly changes in the code in the form of supplements and to provide major revisions of the entire code every three years. Other well-known reinforced concrete specifications are those of the American Association of State Highway and Transportation Officials, OSHTO, and the American Railway Engineering Association, area. 1.10 SI units and shaded areas. Most of this book is devoted to the design of reinforced concrete structures using U.S. customary units. The authors, however, feel that it is absolutely necessary for today's engineer to be able to design in either customary or SI units. Thus, SI equations, where different from those in customary units, are presented herein, along with quite a few numerical examples using SI units. The equations are taken from the American Concrete Institute's metric version of building code requirements for structural concrete, ACI 318M11. For many people it is rather distracting to read a book in which numbers, equations, and so on are presented in two sets of units. To try to reduce this annoyance, the authors have placed a shaded area around any items pertaining to SI units throughout the text. If readers are working at a particular time with customary units, they can completely ignore the shaded areas. It is hoped, however, that the same shaded areas will enable a person working with SI units to easily end the appropriate equations, examples, and so on.